My name is Elise Kayan and I'm with Reseda High School's Police Academy Magnet. My submission entry is on Police Academy Magnet schools. The problem I address is the divide between at-risk minority teenagers and their police, which affects a multitude of issues, specifically juvenile crime. My solution is to create a series of law enforcement schools designed for at-risk youth interested in learning about law enforcement. With a structured learning environment composed of academic and physical rigor, officers are placed in these schools full-time to serve as teachers and resources. There are so many positives that the students gain from these police academy magnet schools. Bonds have been made between students and their police officers and lives have been saved because these teenagers are being guided down the right paths. Relationships have also been established and in many cases future law enforcement officers are produced. Police Academy Magnet Schools are a win for the student, community, and the police department. Hi, my name is Dr. Kimiori Nakamura, and I'm assistant professor with the Department of Criminology and Criminal Justice at the University of Maryland. Hi, my name is Brett Buckland, and I'm the director of planning, research, and statistics at the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections. Our proposal, Paying for Success in Community Corrections, was a collaboration between the University of Maryland and the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections, funded by a grant from the U.S. Department of Justice. It aims to use performance incentives in funding state contracts for community corrections or residential halfway houses. Pennsylvania spends $100 million annually on 14 state and 40 private run community correction facilities. Yet studies have shown that individuals released from these facilities have higher recidivism rates than those released directly from prisons. This issue is not unique to Pennsylvania. Studies around the nation have reported mixed results at best. Our goal was to tie payments for the operations of privately managed community correction facilities directly to positive results in recidivism rates. We rebid all contracts, offering higher payments for reductions in recidivism rates, but terminating contracts for facilities in which recidivism rates increased. After the first evaluation period, the recidivism rate of community corrections facilities decreased 16.4%. Most importantly, we estimate that this reduction saved nearly 60 potential victims of crime in Pennsylvania. We are very excited about these initial results and what they suggest about our potential to substantially reduce recidivism in our halfway houses going forward. My name is Terry Power and I'm a Senior Program Manager with CSH Ohio. CSH is a national organization promoting supportive housing to impact the lives of vulnerable populations. Supportive housing, in a nutshell, combines affordable housing, usually a rent subsidy, with individualized supportive services wrapped around the individuals. The problem my paper addresses is the overcrowding and misuse of prisons and jails, especially regarding those with a mental illness. Serious mental illness affects those in jails and prisons at a rate of four to six times higher than that in the general population. In addition, they recidivate quicker back to prison and stay longer. Returning Home Ohio is the innovative solution by offering supportive services to those exiting state prison homeless with a mental illness. The program began in 2007 and it is a statewide program funded by the Ohio Department of Rehab and Correction. They understand that it is an investment up front with a cost savings on the back end. The first five years of Returning Home Ohio, the participants found that they were 60% less likely to recidivate back to prison and 40% less likely to get rearrested. Since July 2012, Returning Home Ohio participant recidivism rate was only 5%. We understand that Returning Home Ohio by offering stable and safe housing coupled with supportive services will continue its success in working with this vulnerable population to integrate them into the community and reduce their stays to prison. I'm Cy Vance, the Manhattan District Attorney. Our entry is about a proactive approach to crime fighting that reinvents the role of the prosecutor, which we call intelligence-driven prosecution. Now, traditionally, a prosecutor would take a file from the police, build it, try it, and then file it away, never to be seen again. 
And because we weren't sharing our intelligence from that case, we weren't connecting crimes to other crimes or criminals to other criminals, and we weren't working proactively to prevent crime before it occurs. By contrast, intelligence-driven prosecution is data-driven. It's a model which enables prosecutors to expertly harness and share actionable intelligence in order to build and then bring more far-reaching cases which forcefully impact public safety. And we work hand-in-hand -hand with police and community leaders to determine who are the individuals driving crime, where are the pockets of violence in a community, and what are the community's concerns. Intelligence-driven prosecution has enabled our office to bring some of the largest gang takedowns in our city's history, reclaiming entire neighborhoods from violence. And by focusing our resources on the most serious threats to public safety, it's made our system fairer too.